Whitewater kayaking is one of the world's most exciting, yet possibly least understood, outdoor sports. Around the globe, steep riverbeds and flowing water combine to produce rapids. Floating on a raging torrent, kayakers navigate through some of the most seldom seen and wildest environments on the surface of the planet. White water requires two key ingredients, water and gradient. In the area of Loch Aber, surrounding the West Highland town of Fort William in Scotland, both of these ingredients are available in abundance. Here, a prevailing westerly wind brings in harsh weather systems from the Atlantic Ocean. When these weather systems collide with the high coastal mountains, the clouds burst into life, releasing torrential downpours of rain onto the landscape. As the rain falls to ground, it begins to travel downhill, over and through the land, under the force of gravity. Eventually, trickles of water become streams, and these streams become rivers. In a matter of hours, what started as a shower of rain has given rise to a river flow of breathtaking complexity and power. Since the formation of the Caledonian Mountains over 400 million years ago, the power of tumbling water has helped to carve today's glens of Scotland. The rivers now flowing within them owe their forms to a legacy of incomprehensible time and force. Through the ages, water has created a path downwards which has become smooth and clear. One of the most obvious flaws within a downwards flowing river is that not all areas of the flow are travelling at the same speed 
or even in the same direction. Parts of the water may slow and wrap back upon themselves, creating eddies, sections which travel in the opposite direction from the main flow. Other areas of flow will differ through a vertical plane as waves of water rise and fall. Eventually, they crash back upon themselves to form stoppers, seams and cushion waves. Using these features allows kayakers to control their descent, speeding up and slowing down, turning and even playing in the flow. But these same features can also make passage a great deal more difficult. To survive a journey through a medium as hectic and changeable as whitewater commands the use of some cleverly designed tools. Short plastic kayaks, shaped for buoyancy, speed and manoeuvrability, are both controllable and incredibly tough. Paddles are light yet strong and enable a firm handhold to be gathered on an otherwise ungrippable surface. Clothing such as dry suits and tops, helmets and buoyancy aids are essential aids in keeping paddlers safe and warm. To seal the deal, a neoprene spray deck is worn around the paddler's waist then attached to the boat cockpit by a strong elastic rim. This keeps water out and buoyant air in. If this seal is lost, the kayak is all but useless to its pilot. In addition to hardware and clothing, kayakers often carry a throw line. This is a piece of lightweight and buoyant rope which stashes into a small bag. When thrown, the line unravels and transforms from a compact package into a lengthy lifeline. It is used frequently to pull companions from danger when all else fails. Just having suitable equipment is but a small part of mastering whitewater. Kayakers must learn to read the water in order to determine the safest route through it. Frequent inspection from the riverbank is often an essential part of any challenging river trip. from the low sitting position of a poised and paddling kayaker is quite different from that of a riverbank observer. It would be foolish to assume that an environment this complex could be navigated without a reasonable amount of skill. Beginning on calm water, 
paddlers can slowly advance through more and more complex scenarios of rivers and their rapids. Along the way, they learn paddle strokes to propel and guide them. From simple forward strokes to more subtle touches to allow for pivoting, reversing and lateral movement. Strokes must be both forceful and precise, delivering maximum power within a short available space. Two of the more essential yet tricky moves in whitewater are the boof and the roll. A boof is a manoeuvre which lands the kayak flat when descending over a drop. This keeps the vessel and its pilot on the surface of the water, hopefully carrying them well clear of any danger. A roll is a backup option when things go wrong, allowing the paddler to right an upturned kayak. A discipline known as playboating is a side of the sport in which paddlers exhibit a more gymnastic approach to kayaking. Using especially short kayaks allows for surfing, spinning, cartwheeling and flipping on features such as waves and stoppers. The Falls of Laura is one of the prime playboating spots in Scotland. Not actually a river, but a tidal race which flows with all its might on the big tides of the year. As Loch Etiv drains from the east, the mighty flow descends over a step of rock at Connell Bridge. The breathtaking features are a rare delight for Scottish kayakers who gather to ride the waves and challenge the whirlpools. Sometimes, the challenge of reaching the water can be just as tricky as the adventure downstream. After carefully checking weather forecasts, paddlers strap their boats onto cars and begin the journey to the whitewater. Finding the put-in often requires a considerable mission upstream. Sometimes, it is possible to make a simple trip up a conveniently located riverside road. For a large part of the time though, it is human power which completes the toughest part of the ascent, as paddlers hike to the put-in by forests, moors, mountains and glens. Moving water can be devastatingly dangerous. Those who travel upon it must gain the necessary experience and skill if their passage is to be successful. Rivers may sometimes appear to conspire against kayakers, making the most trivial natural 
and man-made features become deadly traps. Trees are one of the biggest hazards in moving water. Either rooted on the riverbank or firmly stuck within the river channel, a static object such as this may pin and trap an unwary paddler. Man-made structures such as concrete weirs and dams can form terrifyingly uniform white water features which can be alarmingly difficult to evade. Sometimes, the power and shape of the river itself can serve to prevent human success. From stoppers to rocks to areas where the flow disappears through gaps too small for a person to fit. Or maybe just an endless torrent in which losing control gives little hope of a happy ending. There is always an incredibly fine line between exhilaration, fun and disaster. And sometimes this line is very difficult to see. Many ask the question, why would anybody want to brave the cold, wet and sometimes downright terrifying experience of whitewater kayaking? For what benefit could possibly be gained? Maybe it's the feeling of riding the flow and travelling through such epic scenery and surrounding that it warms the very core of the souls who experience it. Maybe it's the simplistic challenge of human versus nature which appeals to our more primal instincts. Maybe it's about the companionship of friends as epic adventures are experienced and unforgettable tales are created. Or maybe it's just incredibly fun.